A right-hander comes and gets ahead with the first pitch. Luke Harper hitting 328, no homers and 10 batted in. Not a lot of power. Fastball runs inside at 92. Out of Meridian, Mississippi. Not often we see leadoff catchers. Two and one now. They are 41 of 58 as a team. You don't normally see a leadoff catcher, nor does that catcher lead the team in steals either. So. Right. <laughs> he is eight for 10. 91 with the fastball, evens it at two and two. They have just five home runs on the season, but if you look, they have five different guys with five or more stolen bases. And there's a line that's going to be over Gonzalez and out into center for a leadoff base hit. Not much over the overstretched glove of the Ole Miss shortstop, but enough, and the leadoff man is aboard. You see Jacob looking out, trying to see what that looked like, and we'll take a peek as well. Yeah, you'll see this fastball. It just stays down on it and drives it, just gets over Gonzalez's glove. I think if he gets up a fraction of a second earlier, it's probably a catch, but a good start for UNA. And so now that 8 for 10 and stolen base comes to play. Austin Thrasher, 388 average with no homers and 10 runs batted in. Pops up the first pitch he sees. Tim Elko in foul ground. Now moving back at the bag. Makes the catch. Good attacking fastball there by Washburn to get the quick out. I don't think Washburn will be going too deep into this ball game with a big weekend in the SEC coming up. Ole Miss, I think, was maybe a little fortunate with a game cancellation tomorrow. Five-game week on your pitching staff is always difficult, but... For Washburn, I think and if you're Mike Bianco, you want to see Washburn work very effectively and quickly to save the pitch count. He's up against Reed Holman here. This is a throw over to first that gets under Elko, but not deep enough. Out of Athens, Alabama. 300 average with no homers and 18 batted in. Do you know another famous Athens, Alabama guy? Used to quarterback the Chargers? Joe? No. Yeah. I'm thinking Athens, Ohio. I got the wrong state. Philip Rivers. There you go. Big Phil Rivers. I only know that because I lived in that area <laughs> for a little while. That's I got really excited. I was like, oh, Athens. Oh, uh, that was Joe Burrow. Wrong right. one. Wrong state. Um, <laughs> I'll stick to baseball. Nice breaking pitch to get across there to Holman. Jack 2-1 with the 3.54 earn run average. Really wanting to work and work quickly. And throws it down, scooped up by Dunhurst behind the plate. So 1-1. One one. Trying to slow down the 41 steals of UNA. And opponents are 11 for 21 against Ole Miss on the base paths. Another throw that bounces. Making Elko work with the leather over there. I was going to say, Elko's getting some early work in there. Always tough with the snap throws, especially from the right-handers, because it's just so quick. It's a first baseman. You just got to stay down on it and hopefully get some decent hop. Runner doesn't go, and... Nice pitch there with a swing and a miss by Holman. Yeah, that was a really nice slider there. Ball started. You're Holman. You're looking at that ball, thinking that's a maybe a fastball belt high, and all of a sudden it just dives completely away from you. Washburn set. Another throw over. Harper was leaning a little bit, but not sure if this at one ball, two strikes is where you, you might be doing things or not, but Ole Miss going to make sure he stays close. One, two fastball up. In this entire order, one through nine, only three home runs. Again, only five for the team. 
The team leader is Hudson. We'll see a little bit later on. And Lane has won. Everything else. In fact, seven, eight, nine. Some guys getting a look. Quick snap throw. Closer there. Harper was going. You'll see him break to second. If we get a replay here, that was awful close. He was leaning the other way, and I think he might have just gotten back in there, but Washburn definitely got him lean into second base. Not going here. A backhand stab by Dunhurst to keep that from going past him. So three balls, two strikes. You see a long look at Holman there who's turning around and getting the signs out of the dugout. Another throw over, and this one Elko has to knock down. Needing a new baseball, we'll get that. The head coach for UNA is Mike Keen, who's actually been at UNA for 34 years, 20 years as an assistant under Mike Lane in the last 14. As the head man, he took this Lions team, there he is, into the world of D1 baseball. Swing and a miss. Got him on strikes. That was a big pitch there for Washburn early. 3-2 slider here. You see just really wicked. Unable to lay off of that on the two-strike count. I mean, that ball started middle of the plate and ended up down in the dirt. That was a well-executed pitch. And, I said, I think that was a big one for Washburn. Again, we talked about the outset, the documented struggles with the free passes and he's able to command that slider there in a 3-2. I think that's a great sign if you're Mike Bianco. Jonathan Lane, the third baseman, is up. He swings at the first pitch. 250 average with the home run and 15 batted in is the cleanup. They hit 246 as a team so far through the first 22 games. Harper is going, Dunhurst is throwing, and that's going to get off the glove of Chatagne and out in the right. The stolen base happens, and then the runner over to third as it goes out. We'll take a peek as good jump, and the throw just tailing away, Matt, going out towards right field. Yeah, I think Dunhurst got separated a little bit on that ball because that was a good pitch to throw down to second base on it's a fastball up in the zone and his elbow just dropped a little bit. We've seen that a couple times. A nice block there from Dunhurst. We've seen that a couple times this year that ball just kind of comes out and just starts to it's almost like a two seamer and it's running away from shot and you're covering and it's just really difficult for the second baseman to try to make a play on a ball like that. You can't put the brakes on fast enough reach back to get there. Two out though. And a one-two count for Washburn from the stretch. And he got him to foul it off. Got him with the slider on the one-one. Goes back upstairs for the foul ball. See if Washburn goes back to that slider here on the one-two again. Taking his time, pitch number 17 to the plate is another foul. And Lane stays alive. Try to reach it out there just a little bit further away. But Lane protects. And we'll see if they could try to double up on that slider again, as you said, off the plate, or maybe try to go back upstairs again. See Washburn done a good job so far on the first change in eye levels. Bouncer. To bench who's playing third, and he'll throw it across to get the out. North Alabama gets a base runner with a stolen base in an area. He makes it to third, but no scores. We come back for the bottom of the first. A look at the North Alabama pitcher, Austin Nichols, the senior. 
another Athens, Alabama guy, right? He's 6'2", 245. Matt, what can you tell us about him? Yeah, veteran guy. He's going to four-pitch mix. Got a fastball that's going to sit in the mid to upper 80s. Got a slider, curveball, and changeup as well. For me, I think it's going to be absolutely crucial for Nichols to work the bottom of the zone and try to keep this Ole Miss offense off balance, especially left-handed hitters. They're hitting 452 against him. He's given up nine home runs in 21 and a third inning, so he's going to have to pitch backwards to this Ole Miss lineup. You see the ERA at 10.55, the whip really high, too, at 2.02, but there you go, 18 strikeouts, nine walks. So he's had some issue with that, and he'll face off against Peyton Chatnier, who's back at the top of the order with Jacob Gonzalez hitting second. You see Justin Bench third, and at third base, we'll get to the reason there, uh, Tim Elko will be at first base with McCants in center, Alderman the DH, Hayden Leatherwood moving to right, Dunhurst the catcher, and Calvin Harris gets an opportunity in left field to swing it. You know he got the one at bat against Tennessee when we get deeper and talk more about Calvin, I'm sure, but you want to see him swing it before the weekend. Yeah. Garrett Smith at left, Austin Thrasher in center with Zach Major in right. That's the outfield for the Lions with Lane, Holman, Hudson, and Thomas. Third around to first. Luke Harper behind the plate. And we've talked to you about Austin Nichols. 21 in the third innings, 25 runs. They're all earned. 34 hits in those 21 in the third innings. The nine walks, 18 strikeouts. Opponents are hitting what is a team high 374 against him. Peyton Chatagnier, Cypress, Texas. 250 average. You know he's ready to come back after the three games against Tennessee. Fastball missing a bit. He's got the hitter's count to open up with at 2-0. Yeah, the, the one thing you want after a tough weekend is just another baseball game and any other arm. And, and he sends one to right center field, and that one is going to get out of here to lead off the game. Had a very good weekend at the plate. Steady all season long, hitting 346. Takes the first pitch. Strike. No homers, 19 batted in. Had played center field all weekend. Third base today gets a little piece, but it's 0-2. Because Harris is in the lineup, as we mentioned. Leadoff home run for Peyton Chatagnier. Try to get him to chase it the one away. You've been there, obviously. They saw starters in the 90s, 95, 96. I mean, he has some velocity here to get in the upper 80s. There you see, 88. But the difference, you've had a day in between, too, to think about it. But what's the difference in that? Well, I Besides think the obvious <laughs> seven, seven, seven to eight miles, miles per hour. Makes a difference for sure, but... Um, <laughs> What, what Tennessee had working for them, uh, what, which was impressive to me anyway, was they had multiple pitches going. It's one thing if you just got a fastball and that's it. But for Ole Miss, I mean, they didn't see anything last weekend that I don't think that they can't handle moving forward. They just missed fastball opportunities. And I think you could see the approach they had was to hunt fastballs, but when they got them, saw a lot of foul balls straight back to the screen, a lot of foul balls up, a lot of pop-ups in the infield. Uh, to me, that's just an op that's just you just missed your pitch, and Tennessee was good enough where they came back when they missed those opportunities to strike them out. Three twos bounce the third baseman coming up lane catches the hop and then the throw is going to get out of the glove of the first baseman Thomas. Bench will stay at first. That's one of those where you caught that the hop in itself and it's like okay I got it now let me. Turn it loose as we watch. Yeah, Lane, watch Lane come get this ball. He tries to square up to it instead of just working through it, but he ends up getting there and kind of getting a short hop. And then, unfortunately, you know, Thomas makes a nice play coming off the bag and just Bench knocks the ball out of his glove. And, um, you know, for, for Bench and Ole Miss, obviously a positive but uh, tough break for UNA, which was an otherwise pretty good defensive play. Tim Elko steps in as first baseman. Start him off speed and get a strike across. Anytime I see a play like that, I just cannot help but think of the A-Rod. Obviously, it wasn't the same. Bench just ran through. But the A-Rod <laughs> Red Sox play where he knocks the ball out first base. 
you don't get to see those too often. A throw over with Bench, who's four for eight in stolen bases, almost 23 of 32. You see Tim Elko now with 10 home runs, time for first in the SEC. He did have two over the weekend against Tennessee. Just to go back to the missing of the fastball, I mean, the velocity, just to make the point, I mean, Elko struggled early in those games. I mean, almost didn't put a run across the board until the seventh inning of any game. But, you know, Elko took a 100-mile-an-hour fastball and drove it to dead center. So, again, velocity not an issue. I think just Tennessee was that sharp and had Ole Miss off balance all weekend long. A ball, two strikes to the Ole Miss captain. Nichols with the throw over to keep Bench close again. They haven't, at this point, wanted to attack number 25 with a lot of fastballs. Come in with the one there at 88 in, try to run it in on the hands. That's a difficult take, but he does. That was a good pitch by Nichols. Yeah. I think Elko was pretty much selling out there to the off speed, and Nichols tried to bust him inside, almost get the call third strike. The 2-2 two -two comes back with another fastball, and that one above the knees for the strikeout. We'll, sh we'll show you guys. Here it is. Yeah, too close for Elko to take there, but a good pitch by Nichols. Maybe down and away, I think. That's what you're seeing there from Elko. I think that one was down out of the zone, but with two strikes, especially when you get a 50-50 call on the pitch before, you got to be a little bit more aggressive there on anything close. But a nice pitch there by Nichols, and he's one pitch away from getting out of the inning. A leadoff home run, then a flyout, an error, and a, a strikeout. For T.J. McCants, the sophomore 6'3", 190, is now hitting 299 after the weekend. Three home runs, 13 runs, batted in, playing in center field tonight. And he cannot connect. A little change there. Breaking pitches have been coming in in the 70s. Fastball 85-88 is he'll miss down low there, so a ball and a strike. Another one that Ole Miss needs to get a good feeling at the plate. Staring right at us, looking at Coach Clement in the third base box. And it is a fly ball down the third baseline. You see long run there. Lane, left fielder Smith makes the catch in foul ground. Well, Rebs get off to a good start here in the first. You see this oppo taco from Peyton Chatonier. Just takes that fastball and drives it the opposite way. And, and if you're this Ole Miss coaching staff, you got to love that start. Top of the second inning, the Lions have Drew Hudson up, the second baseman. Takes an 89-mile-per-hour fastball out of the strike zone. The Peyton Chatagnier home run, the difference after one. Arab, Alabama, 209 average with two home runs on the season. Again, those two lead this Lions team. They have five as a group. This has popped out of play, had a 2-0 pitch to hit. Pops it in the net just to our right. And it'll hang up on the net, in fact. It will not cut. There you go. 2-1 is up. You can jump up there and get that, right? Mm. Years ago? I think my wife would be like, let's check that life insurance policy before we do uh, anything crazy, huh? 3-1 pitch. Fouled off another one, came at him with another fastball, three and two. Right. 
right-handed hitter digging in here in Drew Hudson. And he pops it out to shallow center field. McCants giving chase. Gonzalez stops, doesn't make the catch, and that'll fall for a base hit. And you'll see this fastball just absolutely gets in to Hudson's kitchen. And McCants gets a tough break. He, he goes back. Those balls directly at you from an outfielder standpoint. There's always the toughest ones to track. You'll see McCants go back, and then he realizes that it's flared out to center, and Gonzalez is not able to get there. I think he's expecting maybe McCants to be barreling in and going to be diving for it. You see him just pull up there. Tough break for Washburn, but to me, base hit to lead off an inning, which is obviously not a positive thing, but for Washburn, again, you've seen a couple times he's gotten to a full count, and that about he got 3-1 count, got a foul on the fastball, and he's able to make a good pitch on the 3-2 and uh, an unfortunate break, but for Jack, I think you he's got to see an opportunity where he might be able to work himself into the weekend rotation, too, so a good start for him could potentially be more innings uh, in the coming weekends. The ball and a strike here to Peyton Thomas. 167, his batting average with no homers and one run batted in. Thomas has been in, now his 19th game, his 18th start, but when we get these next three, they haven't had a lot of action. Fly ball popped up in the infield. Elko shot and yay, and Peyton calls for it. Second baseman makes the play. Takes control of that one. And the pop-up is the first down in the inning. Washburn was going back, and they had a play almost did in that series with Jack Doherty on the diamond when maybe was one the pitcher should go back and catch. Pitchers are taught not to do that, and then it falls in and turned into a base hit over the weekend. Yeah, that was a, it ended up being a huge play in the game, and... As a corner infielder, you're tied. You just see the ball go up. You try to take command of it. And it was one of those where, again, you don't want your pitcher to make a play, but you hopefully can recognize, man, I got the easiest shot at this one. Runner goes and in safely is Drew Hudson. We told you they will steal. This is the second of the game. They're two for two now, 43 of 60 on the season. I'm not sure if that was a delayed steal or not. Let's see. Yeah, this was a delayed steal. You see how he shuffles, he gets his secondary lead and gets Dunhurst really just, he was on his knees getting ready to throw the ball back to Washburn. Takes two hard shuffles and takes off for second base. That was really well executed delay steal. Hudson's fifth of the year. Zach Major, this one gets away from Dunhurst and so an easy trot to third. And now all of a sudden after getting the pop up and you get one out, Stolen base, and then that one getting away from the catcher, Dunhurst, and again, North Alabama for the second inning in a row as a runner at third base. Yeah, they got crossed up there. Runner gets the second base. A lot of times you see early in the games, mix-ups happen when you get the call change signs from a guy at second base, and Dunhurst expecting something in the dirt, and the fastball did not drop. Bouncer to Elko, he'll catch flip to Washburn, but it scores a run. And so a manufactured run there for the Lions to tie this one up with two out in the second inning. Zach Major will get the RBI, and the designated hitter Levi Jensen will come up. The leadoff man was on in the first, stole a base. The throw went out in the right. He went to third, but then Washburn was able to get out of it. This time, Major was able to put the ball in play and tie the game. Levi Jensen, 173 average, no homers and five batted in, and that one bounces in. So it's 2-0, and oh, and he's gotten behind here over these last two batters. Yeah, and he's been able to go back to the fastball, and it seems like he's been able to locate that. I mean, the slider in the first inning was pretty pretty on point. We've seen that one just kind of get away from him here lately. Again, these are those moments within the games where Washburn's got to bear down and just get strikes where he can find him. You see that fastball there on the outside. Just get himself back even in the count, and then he's able to attack with the secondary stuff again. Fastball. Called strike two. A little delay from our man behind home plate, which is Randall Montgomery. 
Blake Carr's your first base umpire. Michael Phillips at second and Tony Walsh at third. Swing and a miss. Chase, that's so kind to them. It's Kemp Alderman leads it off for Ole Miss, the sophomore from Decatur, 6'3", 265. Hits 305, four homers. Was going for the fifth one right there with 12 runs batted in. Yeah, that was a that, – if you felt a gust in left field, that was from the bat of Kim Alderman. That was a big swing there. Fastball misses. It's two and one. You know, and Alderman, I, I thought, had a good weekend. I mean, he's three for 11 against Tennessee with a home run. But he had a lot of ha balls hard. I mean, and he had one ball to left fielder where it don't – he – it was a line drive. The left fielder had to jump and catch it. You don't see that very often. And I was talking with him in the dugout beforehand, 117 miles per hour off the bat for that one. So it's a high fly ball into right where Major makes the catch. And apparently, you know, they have the stat cast or whatever the analytics machine is that they have. The hardest hit baseball since they started keeping track of I that. believe it. You, again, you don't see outfielders read a ball and stay where they're at and have to jump. I mean, had the left fielder not caught that, it would have skipped off the left field wall, and that ball got maybe 10 feet off the ground. I mean, it was an absolute missile. Hayden Leatherwood is playing in right field tonight. 280 average, three homers and eight runs batted in. He had a couple of hits on Sunday. Swings and misses late in the game to help close the gap and was on base for a possible tying or winning situation. Ahead in the count, two balls and a strike here. Played left field all weekend, but right field tonight. And the changeup stayed high, so three balls and a strike. He hit well. Dunhurst just missed on a couple, but had a good Sunday, which the Rebels will need. Leatherwood pops it up. Second baseman is Hudson. Shortstop is Holman, and the shortstop is called for it on the second base side. To the disgusted <laughs> second baseman, uh, Hudson, like that. that's my ball, but okay. On a day like today, I'm I'm probably okay letting somebody else take it though. It's a tough sky. You got this kind of dusk with clouds and the lights. Um, I don't know if you know that you know, Dunhurst has his fingernails painted just so the pitchers can see the signs a little bit easier. So, not exactly the the best sky to try to catch a pop fly tonight. But this again, right there, we've seen a couple of them from McCants and now Leatherwood. A fastball that was very hittable and just popped it up. Alderman as well had a three-one pitch that he could have. Hammered, and uh, you just see three pop-ups in a row from those guys. Dunhurst for the weekend got the average back up up to 217. Couple of homers. Three-run home run on Sunday. It doesn't offer at that one. It's outside a ball and a strike. working quickly that his he's been around the plate with that fastball he's been close I think he's been doing what he needs to do honestly he needs to be trying to expand that strike zone out as far as he can you see you see that just uneasy swing there from Dunhurst he's been able to mix you saw the change up there just missed fastball just missed and then Dunhurst was clearly looking for something else there so he got another fastball to even the count Pitch number 35 from Austin Nichols. And he misses out with it, three and two. All three hitters have had a count go to three balls. 3-1 three for Kemp Alderman, 3-1 for Leatherwood, and 3-2 here to Dunhurst. He's gotten a fly out and a pop out of the other two. This one is laced over the top of Coach Cleary at first. He played that off pretty Pretty smoothly, but that ball was was ripped over by the Ole Miss first base coaching box. Uh, Nichols just lost control of that pitch. It got away from him, and he'll give a free pass 
to Hayden Dunhurst. To bring up Calvin Harris, 542, the average, no homers and five batted in. Well, when the injury hit him, he was really swinging the best bat for the Ole Miss team. Yeah, it's been apparent that not, you know, Kevin Graham has gotten a lot of the notoriety for obviously missing his production, but Calvin Harris is coming in hitting 542 before the injury, an OPS of 134. I mean, he just all the numbers are jarring. Sends one left field opposite way. Left fielder Smith going back at the wall. He got no room there, and it's gone. And, uh, well, Harris returns to the lineup in the nine spot. Two out walk, and it comes back to get you. Shotney takes a strike. Big swing there, and it's 0-2. Harris had watched the other eight, and he was ready to attack first pitch. And before that, at bat, his slugging percentage was already at 708. So a guy that had worked his way into the everyday lineup for Ole Miss and another big left-handed bat that's provided some firepower and again just with that injury along with Graham's been tough. Fastball that gets shot yay looking. Now we'll take a look at that Harris home run again. They usually sell dollar dogs here at Swayze Field but Apo Tacos served all the way around tonight. So you almost take a 3-1 lead here in the second. Jack Washburn gets the three to one lead to try and protect here in the third after the two-run bomb by Calvin Harris as he will face off against the number nine hitter Garrett Smith and then the top of the line order. Smith thought about a bunt and he takes a strike. 182 average for Smith. No homers, one run batted in. Sophomore from Franklin, Tennessee. Mason Nichols up already. Smith appearing in just his 12th game of the year. Doesn't get that one across. Yeah, not a bad pitch there from Washburn. Gets the strike there to even it up at two and two. So trying to get Washburn hopefully an easy inning here and his Matt pointed out a good possibility we're going to see a lot of arms after that with really nothing settled at all about which way pitching will go for the weekend in Kentucky for this Ole Miss team. Got a late swing and a miss there for the strikeout. Yeah, like, like hot market real estate. Pitching's all about location, and you see this slider right there again. It's up a little bit, but that slider's been really good tonight for Washburn. But the slider doesn't play if the fastball's not effective, and he's been working off the fastball extremely well. He's been living on the edges. You see that pitch down in the zone for a first pitch strike. That's a guy that's in command of his stuff right now, and he's trusting it. I think it's, again, exactly what you want to see from Washburn if you're the Ole Miss coaching staff. Into Harper on that one. And the announcer's curse almost got a hit by pitch <laughs> on that one. It, it will happen all the time. Harper, one for one, led off the game with a single, stole second, moved to third when the throw went off Chatney's glove and out into right, but was stranded there. Fastball is up now, two balls and a strike. But Washburn has struck out the last two. He got Jensen to end the second and Smith to lead off the third. You know, Harper's going to find this one down the line. He's got his second hit of the day. Harris comes over, fields it, and throws, but that is a one-out double. And Harper's taking both of Washburn's best pitch. He got the fastball on his first at bat, drove it to the left center, and then gets a slider there, stays inside the ball, drives it to left field again. Team lead in doubles, that's his eighth of the year. 
Austin Thrasher popped up to the first baseman Elko in his only at bat so far. Three hits for the Lions, two of them by the guy that you saw in the screen there, Luke Harper. And he's Harper's taken over the batting average lead from Thrasher, who is now just at 333 in his 23 games. Speedy catcher out at second base. There's a nice slider for the one ball, one strike count. Forty-seven pitches, and again the expectation is it will not be many more for Mr. Washburn. Missing low with a fastball, two balls, one strike. We've already shown you Nichols out in the bullpen. Well, apparently, he'll be the next guy on the hill. One hop and a big one to bench. And he'll throw it across, keep the runner at second. That's tough if you're thrashing. You get a 2-1 pitch. You're looking for a fastball. Get just a perfectly executed slider. Right? Hitter's count. Nice play by bench. Check the runner at second. Make a nice easy flip over. He's roamed center field all weekend, and he comes in, and you put him at the hot corner. Guy's a Swiss Army knife. That's right. I'll tell you that. Not only... You know, can he play multiple positions? But plays them well. You know, it's not like you. Harper trying to steal, throw down to third, and he will grab his second stolen base of the night. Three for three are the Lions. And again, that's their 44th stolen base. Not paying attention. Got a great jump. And Bench just had to block that one up. To get a strike to home and now ahead 0-2. Reed struck out swinging in the first. Yeah, they got him on a 3-2 slider. Saw that again. See if they go back to the slider. I think he may go upstairs with a fastball to try to avoid bouncing one in there. Went slider. Dunners blocked it up. Throw to first, and that will do it. The strikeout ends the inning, and they strand Harper at third again. Washburn walks off with a 3-1 lead. Rebels coming to the plate. UNA makes a pitching change as Carson Howard will come on. Austin Nichols went the first couple of innings, and now you see the earned run average, 16.88, just five and a third innings. 12 hits off of him, and the walk to strikeout ratio is backwards. Matt, five strikeouts, nine walks. Yeah, you want to invert those if you can, but for Ole Miss, I think Har Howard's going to be roughly the same what they saw in the Nichols. That fastball's going to be the upper 80s. Got a couple off-speed pitches as well, but, you know, I thought Nichols, other than the two big flies, you know, he really located well through his first two innings, and I think it's going to be incumbent on Howard to do the same, or Ole Miss is really going to get after him as we've seen them do most of the year. It'll be the two, three, and four hitters for Ole Miss to take on Howard, who has only gone the five and the third innings with 10 earned runs on 12 hits, nine walks, five strikeouts. And I actually had mentioned that Austin Nichols had the highest batting average against, although only five and the third innings. It's 480 against this guy. Head coach Mike Bianco, 22nd season at Ole Miss. He's approaching 830 wins in Oxford, 930 as a coach. With McNeese. And he was all over me before the game, trust me. He always likes to pick. <laughs> it's a good thing. A ball and a strike. Gonzalez flew out to left in his at-bat against Nichols. He's behind in the count here, one and two. 
Yeah, since going four for five in the last midweek game against Memphis, which saw his average go over 300, he's now 0 for 13 since. And again, just think Gonzalez is missing those fastballs you normally accustomed to see him hammering into the gaps. Curveball dropped low and in. Two balls, two strikes. So fastball, curveball, changeup guy for the right handed Howard. And a fastball, which was a good looking pitch, just missed. And it's three and two. Gonzalez under that one. Pops another one out in the left. And Smith will make that catch. Two times he's had a pitch to hit, though, Matt, and he's just sent a fly ball to left. Yep, that one right there. Again, got the 3-2 fastball. Took a 50-50 ball on that one on the 2-2, but got a fastball really belt high and just popped it up. Justin Bench reached on an error back in the first and was stranded there. 341 average, no homers, 19 batted in. Wherever you move him, he plays. And he has had one of the better bats of the year, and he hammers one back up the middle. Right on cue there, yeah. partner. Took that fastball and just drove it right back up the middle. Get lucky every once in a while. Tim Elko <laughs> comes to the plate, and last season against the UNA Lions, you see a ground ball to second, an awkward play, and this is where Elko tears the ACL, Matt, and just feel for that young man, but then he came back. He was able to do some unbelievable things and still does for this Ole Miss team. Yeah, Ole Miss fans clamoring for statues to be built for the captain. You know, we talked to a bunch of baseball people, and I was – I'm not sure I ever found anybody that's seen a torn ACL on a baseball field. So just a kind of a freak accident. Obviously, Elko came back and led his team to Super Regional. You know, I've seen people step on a base, maybe an ankle, something of that category. But nothing with the knee. But to come back by the end of the year and be hitting home runs and postseason play. And now 10 of them. On this year, he's down in the Calexford Regional. It's pretty remarkable. And I, I've never asked Tim this, but I'd be curious, you know, when you come back from an injury like that, it changes your swing. And what we saw from Tim, he just hit a bunch of home runs, really, with that torn ACL. And so far this year, we've seen the average maybe drop a little bit from what we've seen previously. You see that ball driven the other way. Nice shot in the gap that's going to roll uh, to the track, hit the wall. Bench will step on third. They'll wave him around as a stand-up double gives Ole Miss the 4-1 to lead. You've seen Ole Miss drive the ball the other way. You see him just stay on top of that slider and doesn't try to pull it, drives, gets, goes down with the ball and drives it into the gap. It shows you what kind of power Elko has. But just to just end my point there, you know, you wonder what kind of – how that changes your swing, right? So he comes back, starts hitting a bunch of home runs, and here we are on March 29th, and the guy's already in double digits for home run leading the SEC. So um, you, you just kind of wonder. He's hit 16 last year, well on his way to surpassing that. His third double of the year is 34th run batted in as the pitch gets away from the catcher, and he'll send Elko on a slow trot over to third. Don't know if there are emotions or if if so, Elko has, has hid them pretty well leading into this. Must have been something crossed over. You mentioned earlier it happened so many times. Runner at second because the catcher went out, did Harper to talk to his pitcher, Howard. I'm sure there was something that was a miscue there. Yeah, you always change it up when the runner gets to second. Again, I think sometimes, especially with the guys that haven't had a ton of innings too, it happens pretty frequently. Good change up there. And McCants takes it for a strike. Thirty-four runs batted in for him now, Tim Elko, in twenty-four games. 
That's good numbers also. A home run, a big part of it is Matt discussed. Now for Ole Miss, McCants needs to drive him in. Can't make the contact. It's maybe a little foul tip there, two and two. With one out. They're in on the corners and played deep at second and short. Really pulled over is the second baseman. Nice pitch that misses. Three balls, two strikes. Yeah, that was a really good 2-2 two -two fastball there from Howard. Tough break. Reset it here, see if they go maybe back to the changeup. Go back to a fastball on the outside. Got a breaker that's going to be hit right to the right fielder, Major. Elko will tag. He hit it hard, but a sacrifice fly makes it 5-1. Good job by McCants driving that curveball. 3-2, does his job. Good positive at bat for T.J. McCants, who's looking to again try to flush what happened last weekend and move on. Brings up the big man, Kemp Alderman, the designated hitter. Five runs in two and two-thirds innings for the Ole Miss offense so far. Off the end of the bat from Alderman. Big designated hitter. He has seen some time out in the outfield. Probably will again before the season's over. Good eye there. Takes the pitch to even the count at one. One ball, one strike. Fastball at 89 is low and in. Two balls and a strike. He had a 3-1 count at Alderman in his first at bat against Nichols, but then the fly ball to center. 2-1 here, and that one misses. And so, again, he gets 3-1, and one, and that's already 20 pitches here against Ole Miss hitters. It was 3-2 for Gonzalez to fly out. First pitch for Bench, 0-2. Alderman fouls it straight back. Then 3-2 and two for McCants, and now 3-2 and two here. And a couple of runs in. Ole Miss has scored in every inning. 3-2 is crushed foul as that one's going to hook and go into the woods. <laughs> the power from Kemp Alderman is kind of ridiculous. That ball was really got in on him a little bit, and he still just drove it out the opposite field. Now a 3-2, what do you come with? Tried to spin it in there, and he misses and walks it. First walk given up by Howard. Nichols had one walk, and that was Dunhurst. And he came around to score on the Harris home run. That's the 144th free pass of the season that Ole Miss has taken with walks and hit batters. Of the previous 143, 71 of them have scored, including the one earlier in the game. And Leatherwood hits a rocket into left. Right as I say that to the base of the wall, Alderman's going to round third, and he's going to score, and it continues. Ole Miss gets a free pass, and one out of every two times, Matt McLaughlin, they score. It's pretty good numbers. So that was a changeup out of the hand, just hung up in the zone. Leatherwood hammers that one the other way, but – Absolutely, that's what we were accustomed to seeing from this Ole Miss lineup, just pressure, nonstop pressure, getting guys on base, driving a man. That's what made this past weekend so uncharacteristic. And, but you have to feel good if you're Mike Bianco with the start to this game so far. Again, the opposite field hits to me is what's really sticking out. When you press, you tend to pull the ball and you miss pitches that you should hit. Right now, Ole Miss is just taking the pitches that they're given, and they're driving it where it's supposed to go. There you see total walks and hit batters coming into the night, 142. That had turned into 70 runs. Well, both walks have scored in this one. 
Leatherwood uh, misses the pitch. And it's uh, even one ball, one strike count. He was the one who walked in the second, and then Calvin Harris crushed the next pitch for the two-run home run. Leatherwood driven in just his ninth run of the season. Two balls and a strike to Hayden Dunhurst. Second double for Leatherwood. He has two doubles, three home runs out of his 15 hits. Way upstairs. Three balls and a strike and another hitter's count. Carson Howard came in and had been touched up in his first five and a third innings on the hill for the Lions, and the Rebels have gotten him for three here in the third. Gets the change to make it three and two. Three out of the last four guys have seen a three-ball, two-strike count. Leatherwood didn't wait that long. He jumped on the first one. Yeah, Leatherwood got a first-pitch hanging changeup. That was a good three-run changeup there from Howard. 3-2 is hit high and turned on way deep. I don't know if we'll see that one there. It comes down. That one was headed to two below. <laughs> way out in front was Mr. Dunhurst on that one. Yeah, you talk about being geared up for a fastball. <laughs> you hit one like that. See where Howard goes now after that one. 3-2 will miss away, and Dunhurst walked for the second. Two, the on-base percentage at 621, which was eighth. You talked about his OPS, and he's crushed another laser third base side. That'll roll to the corner. Leatherwood trots in. He gets away from Smith for a moment. Harris is going to go back with a double. Seven now eight one. Can add another run to that walk tally and another oppo extra base hit for Ole Miss. Just watch the, the hands and the eyes of that ball. Again, doesn't try to do too much, just drops a head on it, drives it down the line. It's about as it's pretty much perfection from a left-handed hitter on a right-handed pitcher. It's hard to do it much better than that. You got two opposite field extra base hits from Harris back from injury. You got an opposite field home run from Chatagnier tonight. Can start to sense the Ole Miss lineup starting to gain a lot more confidence after that weekend. Fastball away makes it 1-0. and oh. Peyton Chatagnier led off the bottom of the first with a solo home run. And then he struck out looking in the second. He's the ninth Ole Miss hitter to face off against Carson Howard. Who misses again, two balls, no strikes. And that whole free pass scoring continues for Ole Miss. As Dunhurst walk and comes around on the double from Harris. Here's one to right field for Major who makes the catch. But Ole Miss. And again, continue to pound the zone with that fastball is going to be really important. See that first pitch slider there. And we gave you those things on North Alabama. They do have a win in Tuscaloosa as one of their six on the season. They won 9-5 to five on March 9th against the Crimson Tide. A ball and a strike to Jonathan Lane, the third baseman who is 0 for 1 as he grounded out to end the first. They were scheduled to play Vanderbilt, but that one they ran into some weather and has not been rescheduled. Fly ball right. Leatherwood will make that catch. But they have beaten Alabama. They will make a trip to Mississippi State on May 17th, in fact. So it's the third meeting since 2019, and they have a win in Oxford, in fact, 10 to 6 in 2019. Almost won last season's game. 20 to 6, marking the most runs ever given up by the UNA program. They were a storied and very good Division II baseball team. You see the Lions as it's a 1 0 count to Drew Hudson. He led off with a single in the second, stole second, moved to third on a wild pitch, and later scored on a ground out. 
It's fifth. For UNA. Came in hitting 246. The pitch from Nichols will miss. It's two and one. We'll see how long Ole Miss will, will go with Nichols here. There's nobody throwing or at this point. Fastball low will miss. It's three and one. Mike Bianco's gonna want economical innings out of the bullpen from here on out. Fouled straight back, had a fastball to hit at 91, did Hudson, and he's underneath it. So three and two now. For Nichols. Ninth appearance, 10 and two thirds innings so far, 11 strikeouts, so a strikeout per inning guy. Couldn't get it there as Hudson Gets a foul ball straight back again. Yeah, good challenging fastball there. Getting himself back in the count. You see that fastball sitting at 92. It's got some good run to it as well. Again, freshmen have a, some, sometimes have a tough time working themselves in the rotation. Nichols has worked his way in to continue to build a more prominent role in that bullpen, but tough walk there. Hudson has been aboard both times. The leadoff man, Luke Harper, has been aboard both times, and Drew Hudson has now been aboard both times. Of course, Jack Washburn went the first three for Ole Miss, and he gave up a run on two hits. No walks. Three hits, rather. No walks and no hit by pitches for Jack Washburn. Nichols working from the stretch. And another foul that goes straight back. Four strikeouts for Washburn during his time. So a good start for him. And now it's in the hands of Mason Nichols in an 8-1 lead. Mason with a long stare in, not working quickly. Runner goes. Throw from Dunhurst is going to bounce. Caught that time by Chatagne and another stolen base for the Lions. This one by Drew Hudson which is his fifth. He's five for nine now. Can see him go again. That throw tailing away from the second baseman there at the back. Yeah, and I don't know if it's just how he's getting the ball out of the glove kind of grip he's getting, but we've seen that several times here over the last few weeks. That ball just kind of two seaming back to the dirt. Nice pitch there by Nichols. Gets the strikeout. Two down. As I had mentioned. See the combined five strikeouts today. Nichols a strikeout and inning guy. He gets one and now it's Zach Major who had the ground ball to Elko that drove in the only run for the Lions in the game. Yeah, those steals tonight, but UNA now tied for 23rd in the nation in stolen bases. Really impressive. Four for four tonight, 45 of 62 for the year. A jarring stat for the trivia question of the night. The leader in stolen bases. Texas Southern with 117. Good gracious. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure how you get on base enough to, to get that many stolen bases, but uh, that's a pretty wild stat. 0 oh, 2 the count to the Lion right fielder. In how many games? 22 games. <laughs> <laughs> Only been caught 18 times. Okay, now I've got to go look and see who they played, right? Fastball is up. One and two. A fly out, a walk, a stolen base, and a strikeout for UNA here in the inning. Nichols trying to leave the runner at second and gets a swing at one blocked up by Dunhurst. The third inning with Gonzalez, and the Rebels scored five off of Carson Howard. And now we see... Mr. Engel, low and in, 2-0. and oh. Yeah. 
freshman righty out of Georgia, taking on the Ole Miss shortstop out of California, who's got two fly balls to left. That one is different. To the right field area it goes. That is gone. You knew as soon as that one went off the bat, Matt, that was going a long way to right center. Yeah, I'm seeing Gonzalez miss a couple pitches early, but did not miss that one whatsoever. An absolute no doubter. Light tower power from the All-American shortstop. Again, we've seen some of these Ole Miss hitters have struggled of late and able to go long distance. Watch him just absolutely drive that fastball. You can see his front shoulder stay in really nicely there. Gets his hands through the ball. Absolute bomb to right center field. Six home runs now for Gonzalez. That's the third given up by Engel. Justin Bench now at the plate. Justin one for two, singled and scored the first of the runs in the third. Check swing and they'll say he did go around. It's 0-2. Bench with the best batting average on this Ole Miss club. And a one for two day going, trying to get a multi-hit day here. Lowing in, it's one and two. Leads the team in that multiple hit category. If he can grab another one and tack it on. Instead he watches here and it's two and two. Six times he's had two hits, three times he's had three hits. Actually, twice he's had a three-hit night, but eight multiple hit games. Instead, he's watched a couple out of the zone here to see a count go three and two. Engel to the plate, and he'll walk in. And Bench will try. They're coming off two out of three against Mizzou. Mississippi State won two out of three against Bama to set up that matchup. Mr. Elko at the plate takes ball one. Double, he's driven in a run. Struck out looking in the first, but scorched one in the right center field gap his last time up. That one will miss. The catcher will drop it. It's 2-0. Oh. So Ole Miss has had four walks tonight and six extra base hits. Nine RBIs on seven hits. Again, that's the first part of the season. That's what we saw out of this lineup. Just relentless pressure. Not extending themselves too much in the box. Taking the walks when needed. Letting the next guy drive them in. Great sign for the fans here at Swayze Field. Nine runs on seven hits. 3-0 count to Elko. Swinging. Yeah, he got a green line in there. That'll mm -hmm. get out of the play. Elko's like Steph Curry. I mean, green light's always there. 3-0, doesn't matter. Well, they should have another good pitch to swing at here. And it will miss. It's ball four. They threw down to second, so Bench is going to roll on around to third. Tell you what, that's heads up baseball by Bench because a lot of guys would just get caught up in the fact that it was ball four and just kind of stay there. Bench stays alert. Watch him. He'll, he just he cruises and he stops because he realizes it's ball four. Sees the ball as he gets past. Still a live ball. Takes off to third base. Had a stutter step a little bit to get yeah. that right foot on the bag, but over he goes. And so they're on the corners with nobody yet. Obviously, Mr. Bench knew the freshman third baseman, Jonathan Lane. Lane from Fort Lauderdale. Here's McCants with a shot down the right field side. Bench trots to the plate, and Elko goes to third, and they'll Stay on the corners as McCants hits it hard. 
Second RBI for McCants as well. Yeah, you saw in his last at bat, he got an off-speed pitch that he drove for a sack fly. Gets another off-speed pitch on the first one. Just drives it to right field. Nice job there by McCants. Lineup continues to put up crooked numbers here tonight. Kemp Alderman, 0 for 1, walked and scored. As the Rebels have scored two more. Popped a foul, that's out of play. They scored one in the first, two in the second, five in the third, two already in the fourth. Nobody out, runners on the corner. Good look at all those numbers. Got a swing and a miss there to make it 0-2. Good pitch there from Mingle. Big, strong, good-looking guy that Alderman has played a little DH and outfield, swinging it as the DH today. Watches, it's gonna skip away. Good read by Elko. He'll touch home plate, McCants goes down to second. A wild pitch will advance everybody. The captain gets a couple of high fives. You see a look of Harper, the catcher, not much he could do there. Yeah, this inning is just starting to get away from Ingle, still with nobody down. And Alderman with a base hit to left. They're going to try and score McCant. Smith comes up and will just throw it to the cutoff guy. Not even try to go to the plate. TJ scores the 12th run of the night. Alderman gets his 13th run batted in. We talk about the power with Alderman, but look at the plate coverage there. That ball is on the outside part of the plate. Again, a ball you should probably take the other way, but he's able to get the barrel to it and still drive it through the six hole. Guy can beat you in a lot of different ways. You saw an oppo home run over the weekend. See one there with just some really good plate coverage from Will, Kemp Alderman. Will Morris is up in the bullpen, the freshman for the Lions, already getting loose. And Leatherwood's at the plate, one for two with a double and a run sc scored, an RBI. He's trying to get his average back to that 300 mark, creeping it up to 288. Nobody out. Four runs in off Engle. Fools him there. Gets a swing and a miss. It's 0-2. Lead off home run from Gonzalez. A walk of bench. Who stole second. Went to third. Elko. And McCants follow. Here's a check swing up the third base side. I think he quick pitched. Leatherwood there. Got Leatherwood really all out of sorts there on that fastball on the inside. A home run, two singles, and a couple of walks off of Mr. Ingles, and that one is set on a line, and that one is down and a base hit. Major will bring it in as Alderman will hold up at second base. Leatherwood has a multiple hit night. It's the third time of the year. Second time he's had two hits. He's had three in one as well. Still nobody out. Hayden Dunhurst, the catcher, is at the plate for the third time here in the fourth inning. Walk in the second. Walk in the third. Scored both times. That number of free passes that Ole Miss is getting and the ability to score them obviously was good coming in, but they've been able to score them all tonight. Dunhurst watches, and it's one and one. Why is that six tonight? When you've seen them track pitches all the way in, not swing at borderline strikes that they don't feel they can drive. I mean, you've seen them return to the to themselves, really, and you haven't seen them chase, press, anything like that tonight. Everything's been relaxed, taking pitches where they 
been given, and it's been just a really good night for this offense. Needed for a little confidence going to Lexington KY on the weekend. A turn, and you have to fake that throw. Not sure Kemp's stealing third, <laughs> up 12-1. Not saying he couldn't do it. I'm not sure he's taken off in that situation. Leatherwood pops it up. Harper, the catcher, goes back. Will not have a play as that one bounces back down to the turf. Aiden Dunhurst. 294 with runners in scoring position. Considering he's hitting 217 overall. It's a good, good number. So he takes one that just misses with an 86 mile per hour fastball. It's two and two. And, you know, I think given the other injuries Ole Miss is facing, Dunhurst missed some time with an injury as well. So, I think what you'll see him is see him continue to heat up as the season goes on and gets back his timing, which can always get away from me if you miss extended time. 2-2 two -two hangs up. It's 3-2 and two, and a streaky hitter mm -hmm. as well. Oh, well, and the guy that put Ole Miss back in the game with one swing on Sunday, you know, they looked for momentum. That was a momentum-building home run. They almost pulled off the win on Sunday. And next thing you know, this offense is back to humming. Well, each at bat so far, he's seen a three-ball, two-strike count. A lot Walked. of deep counts tonight all the way around. This is the eighth pitch of this at bat. And 30 pitches for Ingles since he came in the game. Nobody out, by the way. And the third time tonight, Dunhurst will walk. Thought UNA had somebody throwing, but nobody throwing in the bullpen currently. So either somebody's ready to roll or it's going to just be up to Ingle to try to get through this inning and save some of the UNA's pitching for the weekend. Definitely. And batting ninth with a smooth 577 batting average is Calvin Harris. So say definitely not the guy you want up right now with bases loaded when you're trying to still find the first out of the inning. We'll see a pinch runner here for Hayden Dunhurst. I think that's Banks Tolley. So Dunhurst can take a little rest for the rest of the night. Man at the plate gets another one. Base hit in the right. They will hold the runner at third. They now have the runner at second caught up, but a late throw and back in. Banks will get back. Alderman scored. They held up Leatherwood. And you can see the rest of the play as Calvin Harris is now three for three tonight. I have a night, number 20. Home run, double, and a single. Just saying. Got a few innings of baseball left. All he's got to do is find himself a gap, and we're talking about a really special night. You see Thomas there, which is expecting to go to the plate. Tully was caught off second base. Tough night for Engel. Yeah, they'll take him out after not retiring a batter. Ole Miss with the first five guys have scored, and they have taken it to a 13-1 to lead. Bases loaded, nobody out. We'll tell you about the new guy coming up in a moment when we return to Oxford. Fourth pitcher of the night for UNA is Will Morris making his sixth appearance. Better numbers than the other guys so far. 1-0 and with a 5.79 ERA. Nine and a third innings. Eight strikeouts, three walks. And what will he toss up towards the Rebel hitters? Yeah, another three-pitch guy for UNA. Opponents, right-hand hitter sitting 357, left-hand hitter sitting 308 against Morris. And in a situation like this, down 13 to 1, the job's very simple. Just find outs however you can get them. Double plays, pop-ups, strikeouts, sack flies, any way you can record outs for Morris just to try to get yourself out of this inning is the mission, and we will see a pinch hitter for Ole Miss and Garrett Wood. And I'm sure we'll see a lot of new guys come off the bench for 
both teams, but this will be Garrett Wood, the senior from Clearmore, Oklahoma, transfer from Johnson County Community College. Wood appearing in his 12th game of the season. And he takes a first pitch strike. So he will hit in the top of the order. You see there, 167, no homers, none batted in for Mr. Wood. He pops it up, third base side, long run that the Lions will have a play on, and Smith will make the catch right at the chair for the out. Not sure why Leatherwood didn't tag there. He was ready to go. Nice catch there from Smith. If you just thought that it was maybe too shallow, but you see Smith crash into the wall. Right at the chair with the diamond girl there, but nobody running. Good job by Morris to get the pop up there. A desperate first out. After five runs had crossed the plate before that out. Jacob Gonzalez led this inning off with a home run. Might have a same play down the line. Smith again, a little easier play at the line. Makes the catch this time. Leatherwood does tag and goes and scores the run with two outs. It's almost deja vu all over again, right, as Yogi would say. You can see Leatherwood on the tag. Smith coming over at the line and makes an easier catch. But an RBI second of the night, second of the inning for Gonzalez. It's one of those things in the 14 to 1 game, probably not a huge deal, but for Wood, you get, you get an F7 instead of a sack fly RBI. <laughs> it's kind of like, come on, man, help me out there. Take that ribby whenever I can get it. Up and in to Justin Bench. He's been on all three times. He's shown an error in the first, a single and a walk. He has a stolen base. He scored a couple of times. Good night for the Ole Miss third baseman. Low and in, it's two balls and no strikes. Bounce down the third base side, but Tony Walsh had an easy call there to make. The foul ball on the 2 0 count. 560 batting average of running and scoring position. That's an absurd stat line there from Justin Bench. Takes ball three. Well, he's had a bats where he's worked the count. He jumped on the first pitch he saw in the third. But in the three spot for Ole Miss, batting for the fourth time in the fourth inning. And he launches this one. That on base. Uh, guys with running uh, people, and I'll get it out. Run, uh, runners in scoring position number, that's going up. <laughs> wow. Tim Elko back up. He takes ball one. He's been on base a couple of times with a double and a walk. Has scored two of the 17 runs that Ole Miss has scored in three and two-third innings. Seventeen. Yeah, and that's hard to believe that was Bench's first home run of the year, too. This guy who's hit home runs pretty consistently throughout his career. Bouncer to the shortstop, Holman, who throws across. And so Burton delivers the first pitch. And gets a strike. And Banks Tolley is the one who came in to run and has taken over out and right. So Washburn went the first three. Nichols got the fourth. Burton is getting the fifth. And it's one and one. Jensen Smith and then back to the top of the order for Harper. Jensen batting here in the fifth for only the second time. And the top four spots in the Ole Miss order have 
batted four times in the first four innings. Therefore, you can see the mathematics, 17 to 1. Two ball, one strike pitch from Burton. That's low. It's three and one. Jensen struck out when he faced Washburn back in the second. Drew McDaniel is now up and throwing for Ole Miss. He was scheduled to start tomorrow if they were going to be able to play against Memphis, but that one has already been canceled for the 17th time this season, it seems like. The Ole Miss and Memphis baseball team were going to try and get together in Memphis, but weather will take care of that one. I mean, it's twice two cancellations. But you know what, guys? I think we'll uh, maybe see you next year. Not going to happen, right. is it? So Burton comes in and walks the first guy, Levi Jensen. Garrett Smith is up. He struck out facing Nichols. Actually, he faced Washburn in the third. And Burton can't find the strike zone here. What's happening for West so far through the first six? He'll get a strike call there to even it up. Yeah, 17 to 1 lead in the fifth inning of a 10 run rule game. Mission's pretty simple just fill up the strike zone and try to get yourself out of the inning. Nice shot there by Burton to get himself back in the count after the walk. It's ahead at, of all two strikes. Well, the man on deck, Luke Harper, he's two for two with a single and a double. Yet to score, but he's hit the ball hard both times very well. So Burton looking for an out, possible ground ball to turn two. Gets a swing and a miss for a strikeout. Nice bounce back there from West Burton. Just attack there at the fastball. The guy of Burton's size, it's always tough to pick up the ball because it feels like it's just coming out of the center field trees out there from Swayze. <laughs> and you just feel like, man, that ball's got some crazy downward trajectory. And for Burton, that's where he is effective is when he's got control of that fastball. He can work off of that. He came in with an inning and a third, right? So as he throws the first pitch for a strike there. All five outs he has recorded this season have been strikeouts. No hits against him. Three walks. Pretty simple, right? Just eliminate the walks and you strike everybody out. I mean, that's... Gets a swing on that one and gets ahead 0-2. That was a sword there. Our, my favorite Twitter... <laughs> Follows Pitching Ninja, who loves him some West Burton, that's for sure. See the big fella talking to himself there. He's getting fired up. He's getting back into it. He likes whatever the pitch he is supposed to throw, and here it comes. Went down low with it on the fastball. And that's just part of his game, too. You know, he's talking to himself, getting himself fired up. And sometimes when you have an outing like he did previously, sometimes it messes with your confidence a little bit. But you can see he's starting to build back for Wes Burton here. 1-2 to the plate. Tried to get him to swing again. Here's a late throw. And out at second as Levi Jensen was trying to break on one in the dirt. Well, Harris says I'm three for three, but I need something else to do. Let's throw him out. <laughs> that was a laser beam. Look at the block up. Didn't even notice he was stealing. Didn't get his feet set and throws an absolute missile to second base. And it wasn't even close. Have a night. It's a two ball, two strike count on Harper. But two out now after the caught stealing. And Harper will foul it out of play. First time tonight that the Rebels have been able to throw a UNA out trying to steal. I mean, his feet weren't even <laughs> set. That was all arm strength. 
A strike away from getting out of the inning, and there is another right-hander for Ole Miss in the bullpen. Burton kicks it, delivers, and bounces it in. And so three and two now to Luke Harper. See the big name, Wes Burton, on the glove. Big fella kicks the 3-2, and he will walk Harper. So two walks in the inning. He's gotten away with it to this point with a strikeout and a caught stealing. See the head man, Mike Bianco, looking out and getting ready to call the pitch with... Austin Thrasher coming to the plate. Thrasher's 0 for 2 with a pop up to first and a ground out to third. And Burton again gets behind early. Yeah, Harris has had quite the night as we've talked about by Luke Harper. Man, 2 for 2 with a walk, double, two stolen bases. Had a pretty complete night himself. Throw over to first. Gets Harper to dive back in. I'm not going to lie. If I saw Calvin Harris make that throw down to second base, I might not even worry about my time to home plate because I'm not sure Ricky Henderson was getting second base on that throw. Burton to the plate. That's sent to left. Holly going back, and that is sent into the bullpen in left. And a two-run home run. So the walks eventually do bother Wes Burton, who gives up the round tripper to Thrasher, his first of the season. Yeah, that ball was absolutely crushed by Thr Thrasher as well. It's what happens when you get behind the count. Got to go fastball heavy. Thrasher obliterated that ball into the bullpen. Just... Drop and drive on that one. That ball was a line shot off the back wall of the bullpen. Well, Lions plate two off of Wes Burton. Reed Holman has struck out both times. Both were to Washburn. Fastball missing low. One ball, no strikes. A walk, a strikeout. Jensen then thrown out trying to steal. A walk and a two-run home run. It's two-ball, no-strike count on Reed Holman. And Burton's going to take a big step off, try and gather himself. Just cannot allow offenses at this level, those amount of free passes and when you put yourself in bad counts as well, I mean, this level, it's about everybody can hit a 2-0 fastball, 2-1 fastball. A nice bounce back there from Burton. 89-mile-per-hour fastball to get the strike. Holman came in hitting 300, but the two strikeouts bounces in, and Harris is able to knock it down 3-1. Try and settle himself down again. Top of the fifth, 17-3, but two of the runs here in the inning. West delivers, and that is a foul to get it to three and two. Seventeen runs, twelve hits for Ole Miss, who have committed an error. Have stranded two. Three runs, four hits, two errors. The Lions have stranded three. Burton's three-two. Pop foul over the top of the booth here. Actually hits on top of the booth here. I would have had that one, I think. I'd let you have it. <laughs> 
you know? Might have had to take a break after I, <laughs> I miss it. Hits me right in the head. Wind kind of blowing out towards left field here, deep into the game. Fastball will miss, and Burton has walked just third of the inning. And here comes Coach Mike Bianco, and he's already pointing to the bullpen, and that will do it for Wes Burton. He does get a couple of outs, but gave up the home run that drove in two, three walks, and a strikeout for the big fella. 17-3, Ole Miss has the lead. Uh, we'll have a pitching change, and we'll come back and tell you all about it right after this in Oxford. Drew McDaniel on the hill becomes the fourth Ole Miss pitcher tonight, making his eighth appearance. 2-0, 7.62 earned run average, 13 innings, 16 strikeouts, but also 17 hits to go along with nine walks. Yeah, McDaniel's a guy... That was in the rotation to begin the year for Ole Miss and a guy that they had expected to play a big role. And I think a guy who's starting to redefine his role. But the analytics of his stuff is really good. The fastball is going to be in the 90s. Breaking ball can be extremely good when it's when he's got it working. And I think if you're McDaniel, unlike what we saw out of Burton, you just got to absolutely fill up the strike zone here, get your guys back in the dugout, try to save as many arms as you can going into the weekend at Kentucky. This is a guy that was 5-2 and two a season ago and had 13 starts on a team that played in the Super Regional. It threw 63 and two-thirds innings and struck out 72. Now this is his fifth relief appearance now. And the longest outing for him was against Charleston Southern way back in February. But here it's about a clean inning worth of work, maybe more but it, at least get some time here and to figure out his mix into the weekend. Jonathan Lane will be the first one that he sees. Lane is 0 for 2 with a ground out and a fly out. And he misses with the first pitch. Two runs in the inning on a hit. The hit left the park, but three walks from West Burton. And we bring in McDaniel. Gets the strike there. One ball, one strike. Again, Drew was scheduled to start the game against Memphis tomorrow, so they were obviously going to try and stretch him a little bit on Wednesday. With that game canceled because of possible incoming weather, he's getting an opportunity here in the top of the fifth in relief. When you saw those, those last two pitches, 93 down and away for a strike, breaking ball down in the zone for a strike two, and the stuff is absolutely there. Daniel just had a tough time putting it all together. Let's see if he goes back to the fastball here, goes back to the breaker. Went fastball at 93 and gets the called for a strike. John, lefty hitter, 6'1", 215. The freshman out of Wildwood, Missouri. Fouls a pitch off. Fifth game to be in. He's one for four with a base hit. Got his first hit and his last pinch hit opportunity against Oral Roberts. Way up high on the 0-2. Just a bit high. And we're going to see what looks like a whole host of new guys come to the plate as Ben Van Cleve is already on deck for the Rebels. 1-2 bounces in. 17 runs on 12 hits so far. Again, run rule is in effect after 7. So a chance for several guys to see some playing time. Kramer watches and gets it to three and two. McCants Knight finishes with a couple of RBI and a single and three at bats with a run score. Kramer has sent this one deep into the night. 
That one is going to hit in front of the security guard who will run behind the batter's eye to get that. Wow, John Kramer. My good gracious. The long distance bill tonight is going to be through the roof. That ball was absolutely hammered by number 17. Big smile on that first collegiate home run. I would too. And look, just drops and drives to the right center gap. Knew it right away. Absolutely hammered to the right center gap. I mean, an absolute no doubter. It's a pretty good bat flip too. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't matter where you are in the outfield. Nobody's safe out there. You gotta keep your head on a swivel tonight. I don't care if you're sitting in the back row or in the front row of the outfield. Ben Van Cleve will now hit for Kemp Alderman. He takes the strike. So Chatagnier had a home run to lead off the bottom of the first. Calvin Harris had a home run in the second. One ball, one strike count here. Ole Miss scored five in the third without a home run, but got a couple of them in the fourth and one here in the fifth. Big swing by Van Cleve. It's one and two. 280 his average. He's looking for his first home run of the season. Kemp Alderman started his DH, scored a couple of runs, singled and drove in one, and now will turn over to Van Cleve, who bounces one up the middle, and that will get through for the 14th hit of the night by Ole Miss. Next Saturday afternoon, our featured softball game is a top 20 matchup. Number 17, Auburn hosting number 7, Florida, Jane B. Moore Field. Our coverage of the second game of this big three-game series begins at 3 Eastern, 2 Central, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Hudson Sapp now steps in as a parade of pinch hitters continue. He takes over for Hayden Leatherwood, Dawsonfield, Georgia freshman, 5'10", 125 average, but that one was a big one at Auburn when he came in when McCants had to come out. Two balls, no strikes to him. An 18-run, 14-hit night for Ole Miss with nobody out in the fifth. And that is sent on a line, but right at Smith, the left fielder. He dropped it. Van Cleve was halfway there and almost started to turn and go back. But Smith, that was hit right to him. The sap crushed this baseball, and it starts to tail on Smith. I mean, to credit Sapp, that was an absolute laser beam out to left, but Smith's got to come up with that one. The error is the third of the night on UNA, and Banks Tolley now will get a chance to swing. He came in to run for Dunhurst and moved into left field. Madison, Mississippi, 200 average, no homers, two runs batted in. Banks. Played at Meridian Community College. With the foul, it's a ball and a strike. And Ole Miss has continued, even though this is the fourth straight new hitter to come to the plate to score in every inning. This off Will Morris. The breaker is called ball two. Two balls and a strike. One in the first, two in the second, five in the third, nine in the fourth, one here with nobody out, runners at first and second. Banks takes ball three, it's three and one. Oh, and the guy on deck <laughs> is Calvin Harris. Just want you to know, he's three for three. Three one outside strike there given. Harris is going to go up there, got to be thinking, I got to get one down the line in the corner that bounces around a little bit. 
Come back from injury. I don't think you want him trying to hustle too hard. 3-2. Big bounce. Gets up the middle by Tolly. Van Cleve will score. Runner goes to third. Throw goes to third. Gets over his head. And everybody will stop at second and third. Tolly gets a base hit. Nice job by Tolly. Taking that ball on the outside back up the middle. So in the second inning, Calvin Harris swung at the first pitch he saw. It was a two-run home run to left. He doubled in the third and drove in a run. He singled in the fourth and is a triple away from a cycle. He has driven in five. 393 average. 800 with runners in scoring position this season. Those aren't even video game numbers. But second and third with nobody out. He takes the count as even a ball and a strike. Pretty sure I couldn't hit 800 off my eight-year-old in <laughs> with a ball. No. Let alone in the D1 baseball uniform. He has 16 hits and 27 at bats. And he pops it up. Shortstop out, center fielder in, second baseman makes the catch. Runner at third, going to tag, come to the plate, and he is out of there. So, turns into a double play with the pop-up to the second baseman making the catch. And then Sapp trying to score is thrown out. Four to two, if... You still happen to be trying to keep score as I am in a 19-3 to game You're here in the You're a better fifth. man than I am. <laughs> You're a better man than me. Huh? After the fifth home run, I think that's when I Shut it down. called it on my book. I'll Garrett let, Wood. I'll let the live stats take it from here. <laughs> he is at the plate. Wood with a pop foul. He took over at second base for Chatagne last time out. 0 for 1 tonight with a foul ball that was caught for well, the first out of the inning in the fourth. So officially 0 for 1. Mr. Wood. Harris's average dropped to 571 again. Shame. <laughs> Just tough. Stop him. Especially when you got to get back in the cage and work on a couple of things. Set him down now. Wood watches. Two balls and a strike. The Lions do have a left-hander that's loosening up. Morris came in after Engel could not get an out. He was able to get out of the inning and Although he did give up the Justin Bench shot. Two balls, two strikes to Garrett Wood. And he sends a fly ball to right for Major. Who makes the catch. Strike three. He's got some good stuff going on here tonight. He does. I mean, he absolutely painted when he came into the, in, came into the game last inning and Again, a guy that I think is going to have to play a significant role for Ole Miss as they continue to try to find themselves on the mound. You just never know how these things will evolve. Could could McDaniel end up on the back end of a game? Does he work himself back into the rotation? You just don't know. So seeing performances like this are really promising. You see that pain on the outside. Three straight fastballs. He's got back-to-back -back strikeouts looking. We saw Banks Tolley move to center. Kramer in left, and now Hudson Sapp in right. So a brand new group it's rolling like, the outfield. Kind of like when the in a basketball game when they sub five out and mm -hmm. sub five in. The old hockey line change. <laughs> Peyton Thomas is up over two today. McDaniel will miss five, six, and seven hitters. You see the numbers on Peyton Thomas. 
He hits one hard and gets a base hit. Rolls that one out to Kramer. Nice job there by Thomas to get the barrel to that fastball, which to this point at McDaniel hadn't really been touched. We'll regroup here and take on Zach Major, freshman from Plantation, Florida. 0 for 2, an RBI because he bounced one to Elko back in the second that scored the first North Alabama run. McDaniel misses low with the fastball there. Washburn, Nichols, Burton, McDaniel. Or Ole Miss on the hill. As we play in the top of the sixth. It's a swing there. Thoughts on, and obviously we know that Burton walked a few, but Washburn looked good. Nichols obviously looked good. Seeing some things that you want out of those guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, I think if you're Coach Bianco, I mean, you're just looking for guys to step up and just take the reins of those weekend opportunities and you know we've seen kind of a revolving door so to speak so far in this season and you know we'll see what it looks like this weekend but Washburn absolutely has taken advantage of his opportunity he looked really good tonight I thought Delusia against Tennessee looks pretty good last weekend as well although that game just got away from Ole Miss so it'll be interesting to see what the rotation looks like for Ole Miss when they get to Lexington bounces away from the catcher you see Washburn there and I, you know, I thought Derek Diamond looked pretty good, too, uh, against Tennessee on Sunday. I mean, he kept Ole Miss in it. They lost a close game, but had the offense been, a, you know, anywhere near what we've seen tonight, you know, you'd probably say the weekend's gone differently if the starting rotation had pitched a little bit better and just kept them in the ball game. Friday and Saturday just got away from them. There wasn't really – there was a snowball that got way downhill, and there's just no way they could have come back, so. Riley Maddox looked good. Brandon Johnson – on that Sunday game as well. 2-2, Two -two, got a swing and a miss to strike him out. Three out of four guys have gone down on strikes against Drew McDaniel. The other is Thomas, who is at second after a single in advanced on the wild pitch. And Levi Jensen will come up. 0 for 1, struck out in the second, walk, and was caught trying to steal second base in the fifth. Daniel with his peak back towards second base, and he just hammers a fastball in there for strike one call. The team batting average for UNA was 246 coming in. They have five hits so far and five and two thirds inning. Nice breaking pitch there. It's 0 and 2. A good look at McDaniel, who struck out the first guy he saw looking, and then in this inning struck out Hudson looking, gave up the single, got major swinging, and he's ahead 0 2 to the hitter Levi Jensen. Got him on strikes. Takes a change that evens the count one and one. Morris staying out there. You can see the games with 10 or more runs. 2021, 20, 19 of 67. This year, 13 out of 24. Which makes the weekend that Ole Miss had even stand out a little more. Not that you know Tennessee hasn't given up double digits to anyone, but that there weren't more runs scored by this offense. 1-2 to Gonzalez. Fly ball left. Smith going back at the track. That's off the top of the wall. Gonzalez at second. He's going to try and motor for three. The center fielder picking it up and throw with a head first dive. Gonzo's in there. 
thought we might get a Jose Canseco moment out there. Thomas kind of gave up on this one. Look, I mean, Gonzalez takes that's a changeup down and away. He takes it opposite field, misses a home run by about two feet, but Thomas just kind of gives up on this ball. And uh, luckily for him, it's off the wall, and Gonzalez motors on into third base. But, man, that was an impressive swing. So leadoff triple, and then bench has popped up left side. The shortstop Holman going back. The left fielder Smith comes in to make the catch. And uh, Gonzalez will stay at third base. The roar of the crowd for the next pinch hitter for Ole Miss. Time one Malone, two sport athlete. If you're trying to avoid power in this situation, if you're UNA, that was not the guy you want coming to the plate. We'll see if that is all for Morris, who came into the game in the fourth, has worked here. I'm talking about, I think, that last pitch, two in the third innings, two earned runs, no walks, no strikeouts, five hits. He'll leave, and we'll get a pitching change. 19-3 the score in the bottom of the sixth. We'll come back with your new pitcher and watch Taiwan Malone hit next. John Lundgren comes on to become the fifth pitcher of the night for the Lions. No wins with a loss, 8.44 earned run average, 10 and two-thirds innings worth of work, 11 strikeouts, five walks. He's given up 16 hits. And so the lefty will come up, and he'll get a chance at Taiwan Malone. Yeah, most guys don't come into baseball games and immediately face an SEC defensive lineman. So, <laughs> tough assignment here for Lundgren. I think, again, if you're UNA at this point, you're just trying to get out of this game and get on to the, to the next series. Alabama's Pro Day is tomorrow afternoon on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Offensive lineman Evan Neal, linebacker Christian Harris, and quarterback Josh Job, just some of the top players or showcase their skills for the NFL scouts and the front office personnel. Our coverage begins at 1 Eastern, noon Central Time. Here is Taiwan Malone, Jamesburg, New Jersey. 500 average, a homer, two batted in. And he watches down and in. Malone, three of six. With his home run and two runs batted in, six game to be in. He scored a couple of runs. Fouls it back. So it's one and one. You can see as well the 10 run rule in effect after seven. Right now, we have that playable. Gonzalez at third base with one out. And Malone bounces to third. Lane will pick it up, throw it to first, and throw it away. And Malone will watch that bounce around. And the Rebels have 20 runs on the board. Not going to lie, I feared for Thomas' safety on that one. Coming down the line with Malone running full speed. That one just gets away from Lane. Does not shop, getting to it, just see that arm drop down. and If he would have gotten hit in the ribs right there. That would not have uh, felt good. So Ole Miss has scored 20 in this one. They scored 20 against UNA a season ago. This is John Kramer at the plate. And you see a look at the big man Malone. Kramer came in to hit in the fifth, got his first home run of his college career. Swing and a miss. 0-2, he is again from Wildwood, Missouri, the freshman. And we're told mom and dad actually made it to this game and That's awesome. got to see the home run for That's John. awesome. Good for the whole Kramer family. That's a memory I'm sure that they will cherish for a long time. Still 0-2 to Kramer. So 20 runs will equal what Ole Miss did last year, and that is the most runs allowed in the Division I era of 
North Alabama baseball. And the second most all time. Foul ground near the dugout, near the camera wall, and Lane will make the catch hanging on over there to get that for the second out of the inning. Nice job by Lane. You got some guys that had been in slumps get out of there. You got a couple, you got Harris back from injury, who was just all over the field tonight, offensively and defensively. And you've had pitching staff that has come together outside of just you know, some walks in one inning. Your pitchers have really looked the part and have executed the game plan. So it's been a good night all the way around for Ole Miss. Big Taiwan Malone has taken over at first base. I think Bench still at third and Gonzalez at short, but we have new guys in new positions everywhere else here in the seventh. Little number off the bat that will keep a count of a ball, two strikes to the North Alabama left fielder. Top of the order after this. You may see some new hitters from North Alabama, it looks like, as well. Fifth pitch of the at-bat. Another foul. That is a nice play and catch. He was actually wearing the leather in the dugout and made the catch. Always ready. Got to be, you never know when your moment's going to come. Could be in the dugout. Got to make plays. Oh, that was Will Morris, who had been pitching, so he just kept his, his glove on in the dugout once he got in there. One, two. Missed outside. So two balls, two strikes. Savell to the plate and another foul ball. So Smith making him work a little bit. Current seven pitch at bat with some foul balls, three in a row. Well, it all started for Ole Miss in the bottom of the first on Peyton Chatagnier's home run. And the hits have continued off of Austin Nichols, Carson Howard, Bryce Engel, Will Morris, and a strikeout to open this one for Savell. After a bunch of running fastballs, a nice sweeping slider there from Savell. Gets the strikeout. A career six, Quinn Petty will come up. The freshman will hit for the catcher, Luke Harper, who had been on all three times. Petty is one for nine on the season, just appearing in his fourth game and takes a strike. Freshman from Georgia. Getting a chance to swing in at Oxford tonight. Did he go after that one? They'll look, and the first base umpire says he does not. One ball, one strike. Well, and you want Logan to have some success because, I mean, we've, we saw, you see in, in every college season, a guy can come in and is going to have to do something for you somewhere to trying to show that he can get another outing or two somewhere along the ways. He's ahead here in the count one and two. Yeah, there's no doubt. It doesn't matter what the score is. Coach Bianco is going to be looking at these guys and these opportunities. Again, Washburn, McDaniel coming in. And, you know, you just don't know how things will play out in the end. Does... Does McDaniel work to the back end of the bullpen? Does John Brandon Johnson somehow work his way into the rotation? Who knows where things can go? We've seen Johnson have extended outings. So does he get an opportunity to stay in more of that high leverage closer role? Uh, but if McDaniel and Washburn and Logan Savelle, Savelle can maybe come in and get you some tough outs against right-handed hitters, I mean, you just never know how things play out in the end. There's absolutely room for guys to expand their roles. Three balls, two strikes here to Petty. That camera shot we saw Brandon Johnson. We also had a look at Kevin Graham, who has been out of this lineup. And they're within a week or so of maybe getting 
little evaluation process and see when he might be able to return. Big part of the Ole Miss batting lineup. Bouncer to second, big hop. Whoa, Wood catches and makes the throw. Kind of in between there, Matt, but he was able to make the play. Well, he made the right decision initially to try to go get it and then realize, man, I may not get there quite in time, but nice hand-eye coordination there from Wood. Now we're two down. Here in the seventh, which UNA is down to their final out. Austin Thrasher will be the one to step to the plate. He hit a two-run home run off West Burton in the fifth in his last at bat. It's one for three, his first home run of the season. Bouncing in and off of Harris it goes. Just to emphasize your point, I think Jack Doherty was that guy last year for Ole Miss. I think he came in in a midweek game that I called, and it was just, he came out of nowhere. I think at that time, Coach Bianca was looking for guys in the bullpen, and Doherty comes in throwing 92, 93, just filling up the strike zone, and ends up playing a crucial role for Ole Miss down the stretch. out there. He was the Friday night starter. 3-0, a little high. And it's a two-out walk. Don't believe you'll see John Gaddis coming into this ball game. No, he pitched on Friday, so bullpen day. Bullpen day for him. Get some work in. Tell you what, if John Gaddis comes to this game, I think things have gone horrifically wrong way, here way in bad, the seventh inning. Way bad in the seventh. This is Reed Singwald, 5'10", 220-pound senior from Connecticut in northern Alabama. He'll take the strike. He's been in one game, one plate appearance, 0 for 1 on the season. Struck out in that one appearance. And he's down 0-2. Kind of grabbed his back after that one. See him trying to walk it off. Been in the dugout the entire time. And Ole Miss a strike away from finishing this one here in the seventh. Savelle trying to put the final touch on it, and he does with one right down. 